personal finance practice problem using Excel. Coupon rate, current yield, yield to maturity, and market price for a discount bond. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, and answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information on the left related to a bond outstanding. We're going to calculate the coupon rate. The current yield will calculate the market price a couple different ways and then we'll do the calculation in a bit more extended format to get a better understanding of how to get to that market price. Let's go to the practice tab which has some pre-formatted cells so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, basically a blank sheet with just the information on the left. If all you have is a blank sheet, you can start out, I would start out by throwing down or putting down or laying down the baseline formatting. I do that by hitting the triangle up top, right click, and then go to the format cells. Only do this if you don't have the worksheet, right? And then I would start off with the currency, the bracketed numbers, no dollar sign, no decimals as the starting point. I'm not going to hit OK because I already have this. I'm just going to X out of it. Then add your data on the left. Make a skinny C column and we're ready to go. So we've got the bond outstanding. We've got a par value of 1000. We've got the annual interest payments are going to be 70. We got the market price at the 840. That market price less than the bond uh, uh, par value. Therefore, it's issued at a discount and the maturity is uh, 10 years. So let's first think about the, the calculation for the coupon rate. That's the easiest thing to do first. Let's calculate the coupon rate. Coupon rate, I'm gonna make this a little bit wider here. We're gonna adjust this to a black and white heading. We're gonna go to the home tab, font group, bucket drop down, making it black and white as we typically do for our headings. We've got the annual interest payments. I'm just going to take the interest payments because that's what we know. We've, we're assuming this time that they are annual, not semi-annual, which is a little bit you know, of a simplification in some cases. It could be a little bit more confusing when you get the semi-annual, but we have some examples of that as well. So it's going to be the 70. And then we've got the par value. The par value is going to be just the 1,000. The 1,000. Let's put an underline here. Home tab, font group, underline. And that's the coupon rate we're calculating. We're gonna divide that out. This is gonna be equal to up to, that's the 70 divided by the 1000. We gotta recognize that cell and to do so, we're gonna percentify home tab number group percentification of the cell. And uh, let's add some decimals here. We don't really need any, but let's add a couple decimals just for the fun of it. I'm gonna make that blue and bordered. So I'm gonna put some formatting around this to do so, I'm going to go to the font group, bucket drop down. That's the blue we're going to use, or I'm going to use. You can do whatever you want, but if you want to use the same blue, it's in the color wheel here. If you check that out, standard, there's the blue right there. If you want to use that blue. And then font group drop down, we're going to go all borders. Okay, so the coupon rate is is not as useful here when we're trying to be comparing the bonds because uh, we issued it basically at a discount so we're also going to be wanting to calculate the yield to maturity could be a useful calculation we can also calculate the current yield so let's calculate the current yield which might be a better tool for us to be doing some comparing and some contrasting and still a fairly simplified calculation so i'm going to make this black and white up top let's go to the home font group black and white for the header and then for, for this calculation, we're going to take the annual interest payment again, annual interest payment. But this time I'm going to be comparing it not to the 1000 face amount, but rather to what we paid for it, which is kind of like kind of like the return and the current you know, time period. Although it's a simplified thing because it doesn't have a consideration of the time value of money and the fact we're going to get the 1000 at the end of the 10 years and so on. But could be useful calculation, current yield. We're going to go to the font group, underline it here, and we're going to just call this the current yield. Yield currently. You must yield currently. 70 divided by 180. And let's recognize with the percentify. Home tab, number group, percentification, 
We're gonna add some decimals on this one, so it's 8.333 on and on, but we're gonna, just gonna keep it at the two threes there. So obviously we have a bit different number given the fact that we've got it issued at a market price, which is uh, at a discount. Notice, obviously you can change the data on the left-hand side if set up properly. If we had it at a premium, for example, this greater than the 1,000, like 1,200, then we've got the 7% and the current yield at the 5.83. Undoing that, we're now at the 8.33. So that's the difference between the premium, the discount. We'll focus more on a premium situation in a future presentation. Let's highlight these. We're going to go to the Home tab, Font Group, Borders, drop down on the bucket and blue. And then let's make a skinny F column and start working on to the right here. Let's move on over to the right. So I'm going to just copy the skinny C by going to the Home tab, Clipboard, Format, Paintbrush, and just paint brushy that format with one paint stroke. The whole fence is painted with one stroke. It's amazing with the Format Painter. Okay, so this is gonna be, let's call this the present value value of, or, or what we're gonna calculate is basically the bond uh, market price. Let's say bond, bond market price. And I'm gonna do this a couple different ways here because I think most people are kind of more familiar possibly with calculating the market price because we talked about before that you calculate the market price with the present value of interest and the present value of basically the maturity value of the 1000. But now we know the market price, which is 840, and I'm trying to back into the yield to maturity. We could use a rate function or formula to do that, but if you know how to calculate the market price, you can kind of back into it this way as well, and we can use a tool called Goal Seek to do that, and it might help intuitively to understand what's going on with it. So I'm going to I'm going to basically uh, make this blue and bordered to do this or make this our header. No, black and white, not blue and bordered, black and white. And then we're going to have the present present. Let's just call it PV present value of interest and then the present value of the face amount at the end. And that's going to give us our market price. Now to do this. I'm going to basically have a, a, a rate that we're going to use rate for the goal seek. And I'm going to, I'm going to use a, a thing, a tool called goal seek, goal seek in Excel. So what I'm going to start with is just pick a rate and I'm just going to pick something like, let's say, let's say 5%, 0.05% and we'll make that uh, a percent. I'll add some decimals to it here. And then I'm going to calculate the bond price based on that 5%. And then I'm going to come up to something that's different than the 840 because I don't know what the actual percent should be. Then I'll ask Excel to change this number to get to that end number to where I know it should be, which is the 840 with just trial and error. This is a useful tool that you can use in Excel uh, and it kind of helps you to kind of back into things in a sort of an algebraic way, but instead of solving algebraically, we just use brute force to solve for the unknown, right? And Excel can do that quite quickly. So let's try this out, see how it looks. We're gonna say this is gonna be negative present value. We've seen these calculations before, so I'll do them a little bit faster. Present value of the interest rates. So this is gonna be, the rate is gonna be the 5% comma number of periods. I'm gonna say is 10. This is not a semi-annual bond, so we'll just keep it at 10 comma. The payment is gonna be that $70. We said $70 on the coupon. So that's going to give us then the 541 present value of the face amount that we're going to get after the 10 years negative present value shift nine the rate we're going to take that five percent comma number of periods is going to be the 10 i'm just reading along here at the bottom and then comma we don't have a payment because this is not an annuity so double comma 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 chameleon and the future value which is going to be the 1000 we're going to get in the future and then enter so there we have that if we sum this up we should get to 840 but no it comes out to 1154 so now what i'd like to do is change this number i'll make it yellow change that number until it gets to this result of 840 just brute force so we could say well what if it was six okay what if it was seven and we could do that like eight and so on or 
we could use goal seek to do that. So I'm gonna go up top and say goal seek. It's in the data tab, I think. And I don't need to be on the cell, so I'm off the cell, I'm over here. I'm just gonna say forecast, what if scenario, goal seek. I have a goal that I'm seeking in Excel and I'd like your help with it. And the Excel's like, what's the goal? And I'm like, we want this number right there to be, and you gotta hard code it right here. We want it to be 840. And we'd like you to get it there by changing this number. So see, so it's kind of an algebraic solving for kind of like the unknown, but doing it with brute force as opposed to working the math. <laughs> so we'll do it. We're gonna say, okay, do it, Excel. And there, there it did it for us. I'm gonna say, okay. So there's the 955. Now the other way you can get to that, which is basically, this is the yield to maturity. Yield to maturity, which is the YTM. Let's do it with a rate formula as well. The rate formula is a little bit confusing. So it's, that's why it's a, probably not, maybe not as familiar with, the, with doing it this way. So we're gonna say rate formula brackets we're gonna say the number of periods is gonna be 10 years. It's not semi-annual, so that's straightforward, comma. The payment that we're gonna have is the $70 on the coupon, comma. The present value, this needs to be a negative. This is where one of the confusing components is, needs to be a negative present value of the market price. That's at the current point, comma. The future value is the bond par value. And then boom, we should get to that 9% again if we recognize with a percentify. Home tab, number group, percentify. You best recognize with percentify. Okay, stop that it's, it's recognizing thing. Home tab, it's annoying. Just do the problem. I'm gonna make this blue and bordered. I'm gonna make this blue or just bordered and then this stuff blue and I'll keep that one yellow. Okay, so then I, I might recognize, again. I might, <laughs> I, I might uh, do this calculation again, you know, just so we can, now we can see it again based on this rate, right? So I'll just do it one more time. This is kind of an overkill, but I'll say this is the present value. This is the present value. This is the market price. So all we did here, negative present value, shift nine, the rate is now that 9.55 comma number of periods is now the 10 comma the payment is going to be the 70 and there we have it negative present value shift 9 the rate comma number of periods is 10 comma comma chameleon because it's not a annuity future value 1000 and then we can sum it up and there we have the 840 again, which is our price. Now we might wanna just break out that 840 so you can see the stream of payments. I think this is just a useful way to see why the bonds are a little bit confusing because they got that two different things going on. You got an annuity thing and a present value of one thing. Anytime things are uneven and we wanna kinda of, you know, do this present value thing, we could just list out the cash flows. Useful tool to know. So I'm gonna then blue and border this thing Blue and border it, por favor. Let's make another skinny eye. Skinny eye is gonna be, skinny eye is a naturally skinny itself. So we can make the column to match. Home tab, format painter, skinny eye, painting that down. I'm gonna to go to K, we're gonna say one, two. I'm gonna bring this out 10 years, selecting those two, putting my cursor on the fill handle, pulling that on to 10 years. 10 years, man. It's a long time. We've been struggling here. We're gonna, it hasn't been that long that we've been doing this problem. That's just the 10 years. So we're gonna say that, and then this is gonna be, let's bring this a little bit larger. So we've got the interest. The interest is gonna be $70 per year. So $70 per year that we're gonna get from our bond. I'm gonna go to year two and say that equals the prior year. So I can just copy that across with the fill handle button, fill handle, drag it on out, drag it on out. And then we've got the face amount. Face value we're gonna get at the end, year 10. At the end, year 10, that's gonna be the 1,000. So there's our, there's our cash flows. So the total cash flows we're gonna be getting equals the sum of the $70 payments we're gonna get each year 
and then equals the sum of the 1,000 we're gonna get at the end, and so 1,700. So now we can we can we could sum up our cash flows. So let's take the total cash flow per year. Per year cash flows equals the sum of the 70. I'm just gonna bring that all the way across. Boom. And then there's the total. Let's do some formatting so it looks a little nicer. Can we make this look a little nicer? It's kind of it's kind of bothering me. This is the header. You we should have a header. This is gonna be paintbrush, black and white, center it. And then let's make this a little wider. Let's make this blue and bordered, blue and bordered. Okay. So now, th now we're gonna take the present value of the cash flows. Let's put an underline under these ones. Does need an underline before you do anything else. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna present value each of the cash flows back each year, year one, year two, year three, year four, and so on. So negative present value, shift nine. The rate is gonna be the current rate, which we decided is the 9.55 comma number of periods. I'm just gonna pull up there for one. It'll copy across when I pull it across and then comma, not an annuity. So two commas, because we want just to bring that $170 back one year and there's the 70 and okay. I'd like to copy this to the right. I can't do so because this cell is gonna move to the right because it's outside my table. So if I double click on that, put my cursor on H7, that's outside my table. Actually, this one's the one I picked up. So therefore I need to absolutize it by selecting F4 on the keyboard. That's one way you can do it. Put a dollar sign before the H and the seven telling it not to move to the right. When I copy to the right, you only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one is the easy thing to do. So we're gonna do the easy thing. We're gonna pull that fill handle to the right now. And so there it is, boom. We could sum it up this way equals the sum, the sum like so. And there's our 840 once again. You might wanna put the price down here somewhere though so that it's easier to see. We could just say, we'll put it right here so we could see we did the same thing, equals the sum of these. So there's the 840. So you can see this annuity payment, we can break it out between an annuity because this is an annuity series of payments and this is a present value of one. But anytime you have a more complex calculation of payment or cash flows into the future that you want a present value, even if they're uneven, you can just break it out year by year and then take the cash flow on a per year by year basis. And that's a useful, quite useful tool, especially for like budgeting and long-term project kind of stuff. So we're gonna make this a little bit smaller. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Make it look nice. This one needs some blue and borders, blue and borders on that. This one needs to have some blue and borders. Did you misspell anything? Did you misspell anything? Probably. No. Oh, I did. Yield. You must yield to maturity. Never. Okay. <laughs> I think we're done. I think that's it. Okay.